Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you all here to Lippmann House uh, for the presentation of the Taylor Family Award for Fairness in Journalism, the Worth Bingham Prize for Investigative Journalism, and the I.F. Stone Medal for Journalistic Independence. Uh, my name is James Geary, and I am the Deputy Curator here at the Neiman Foundation for Journalism at Harvard. Um, this event is really always a highlight of, of our year here since at any time it's a privilege to have so many um, great journalists um, who do such great work in the same place at the same time. But at a time when journalists and journalism's, journalism are under assault, um, financially, politically, even physically, um, not just here in the US but around the world, it's especially encouraging to witness um, work of the, the rigor and the impact um, that we're here today to celebrate. Uh, I have to admit, though, um, reading this, uh, this year's winners um, and finalists and reading them in connection with some recent uh, headlines in the news, it got me thinking a lot about George Orwell. And as you probably know, that's never a good sign. <laughs> One never reads something and thinks, that reminds me of George Orwell. It's more like, that reminds me of George Orwell. Um, so one thing that I read just recently, that there are now 6.4 public relations specialists for every news reporter in the United States. That's uh, up from less than two um, public relations specialists for every new news reporter 20 years ago. So. I think we're all used to seeing the, the dramatic decline in, in newsrooms, but to see it juxtaposed with this, uh, the growth in public re relations specialists, which is a sign of what the marketplace seems to think it wants, I, I found kind of shocking and, and vaguely Orwellian. Um, I read that in Bloomberg News, by the way, so thanks a lot, guys. For that. <laughs> um, <laughs> it must be true. Um, I also read in the Washington Post um, that uh, as of last Saturday, President Trump has made 10,111 false or misleading claims in his 828 days in office. That too seems kind of Orwellian to me, uh, and it provides even more evidence, if we really needed more evidence, um, of uh, I have Stone's famous dictum, all governments lie. Um, we'll hear more about I have Stone in a minute. And I thought again of Orwell when I was reading a Sign Here to Lose Everything <laughs> um, by um, Zachary uh, Miter and Zeke Fox of um, Bloomberg News, our Taylor Award winners this year. Um, their series tells a harrowing story of how businesses are bankrupted and, and lives ruined through the abuse of an arcane legal document called a confession of judgment. Now, before getting a loan, borrowers have to sign a statement giving up their right to defend themselves if the lender takes them to court. And armed with this confession, a lender can, without proof, accuse borrowers of not paying and legally seize their assets, assets before they even know what happened. And that's what happened to two characters in the Bloomberg story, Janelle and Doug Duncan, owners of a a struggling Florida real estate firm. Somebody just comes in and rips everything out, Doug told the Bloomberg team. It's cannibalized our whole life. Though the Duncan's predicament is certainly Orwellian, it was not 1984 that I thought of when I was reading Zach and Zeke's piece. Um, it was actually Orwell's essay, Politics in the English Language, in which he decries what he calls political language, um, which he describes as, and I quote, designed to make lies sound truthful mur and murder respectable, and to give an appearance of solidity to pure wind. Now, <laughs> we hear and see this use of language so much today. I don't know if any of you caught the uh, Attorney General Barr's testimony. That <laughs> is a battle, a battle of political language in the starkest terms. But even in journalism, we encounter this. Uh, in today's post, Margaret Sullivan, Sullivan took the New York Times to task for uh, describing President Trump's um, repetition of a false claim about abortion as an inaccurate refrain. And we have the same debate when we uh, describe 
hate crimes as racially tinged or other crimes uh, as race, racially tinged instead of just racist. Um, but actually, Orwell's point in this essay is a much more hopeful one, um, that the, the decline in politics and the decline in, in language, which he connected to a broader decline in critical thinking abilities, can be reversed. And the way to do that, it seems to me, is through exactly those journalistic values that the Bloomberg News story and the other stories we're here to celebrate today um, embody so well. Precise and relentless reporting, a commitment to fact, fairness, and accuracy, and a spirit of independence and integrity. Given the era of disinformation we live in, it's easy to be discouraged. But should you ever find uh, your hopes for a free, vibrant, and indep independent press flagging um, when confronted with this kind of political language, I encourage you to just look around this room. And when you do, you'll see that facts still matter, that investigative journalists, journalism still makes a difference, and that great journalists are still doing the vital work on which individuals, communities, and democracy itself depends. So uh, I now want to turn to the awards themselves. And before I do that, I just want to give a quick um, description of our format. We will first present uh, certificates to the um, Taylor Award finalists. Um, then we will present the award itself to the Taylor, Taylor winners. And they will talk briefly uh, about, their, about their work. We'll then do the same for the Bingham Prize. And that will be followed by the presentation of the Eye of Stone medal, um, after which uh, the Eye of Stone award winners will um, join uh, a current Neiman Fellow here for a discussion and Q&A. And there'll also be time at the end to ask questions of all uh, our winners and finals.